My name is Valdemar Marz and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Evo Institute's Center for Energy, Climate and Resources and at the LMU Munich. I do research on environmental policies in the transportation sector and on the political economy of climate policies. Many governments have pledged to reduce their carbon emissions, actually become carbon neutral until the middle of the century. Now in the transportation sector, that's particularly hard and challenging. Mobility is very important for households and also for firms. And therefore, prices have to be really high to trigger any changes in actual behavior. Now, that's the reason why it's so important to understand all the effects and costs which policies can have. And only then we will be able to design policies which are effective and politically feasible at the same time. Now, the main policy instrument to achieve environmental goals in the US transportation sector has been fuel economy standards since the 70s, also used in Europe later on. Fuel economy standards work like that. If we look at all the cars which a certain automaker produces in a certain year, then on average they all have to fulfill a certain standard in terms of fuel economy. They can be dirty or cleaner ones, but on average they have to be that good. Now, to fulfill that standard, car producers um, adjust technology and also prices and car features to make dirtier cars more expensive and cleaner cars cheaper relatively to each other. This provides an incentive for households to direct their demand towards cleaner cars and they do buy cleaner cars. Fuel economy standards distort the vehicle market, but they also affect people's mobility patterns and location choices in the very long run. So in my paper, together with the co-author, I've examined how fuel economy standards affect the spatial structure of cities in the long run, and this effect increases the costs for reaching climate targets in the transport sector. To do this, we've established a computer model of the average US metropolitan area based on empirical data, and we've also abstracted from public transit because that only plays a minor role for US commuting. With fuel economy standards, on average vehicles become more expensive, but each trip gets cheaper. So people have an incentive to move further away from the city center to benefit from the lower housing prices in the outskirts. And what we overall get is more urban sprawl. Longer commutes also lead to higher carbon emissions to some degree. So to still reach a certain emission reduction goal, for example, reducing emissions by 50%, we have to ramp up the fuel economy standard even more, distort the vehicle market even more, which leads again to higher costs. Overall, this urban adjustment and urban sprawl effect increases the cost to reach a 50% emission reduction target by almost 30%. So fuel taxes are actually the better policy instrument in the long run. Nevertheless, they are often politically less feasible than technology standards for political reasons, cultural reasons, especially in the US. And this preference by households and voters increases the costs for reaching certain climate goals by quite a bit. These costs and benefits can hit different households differently. And therefore, we think that it's very important that future research examines the distributional implications of this urban adjustment effect, which we studied. If you're interested in further details, check out my paper on the EFO website.